Hey, what's up everybody? This is Dom and today I'm going to show you how to get full read and write access to root on your iPhone 4 running iOS 7, no jailbreak required. As you can see here, I'm running iOS 7. This is an iPhone 4. We have the control center here. Everything's real. Everything works. There are no games here or anything. I'm just showing you guys this so you can understand that this is definitely an iPhone 4 running iOS 7. Now, when I unlock the device here, you'll see that I have all iOS 6 app icons, and that is because I had root access to be able to change out those icons within the file system and basically make them whatever I want. So I just want to prove to you guys here that this is iOS 7. As you can see here, we have the little multitask switcher here with the card layout. We can go into, let's say, the camera app and, you know, everything's fully functional. I'm not trying to pull any fast ones on you guys here. This is iOS 7 on an iPhone 4. As you can see right here in the about section, we have the model number right there. Look it up. We're on version 7.0. There's the model number again, like I said. So let's go ahead and check this out. We are going to be able to get full root access, read and write, and as you can see it on the side, no SIM card slot. So this is an iPhone 4. It's not a 4S or anything. So keep in mind, this will only work on an iPhone 4 running iOS 7. That's kind of the key component here, but if you have one and you're on iOS 7, then this is just the perfect mix of awesome for you. So let's go ahead and check something out here real quick. Just for all you people that might be in disbelief, we have iFunbox open here. I'm going to plug in the 30 pin connector to the iPhone 4, as you can see me doing. And then right here on the screen, you'll see that we have the iPhone 4 running iOS 7 and we do not see jailed next to it and we have full access to the root file system. I can even like say take a screenshot and drag it into the root file directory right here and it'll write it right in there. No problem. The iPhone even recognized something was happening and then we can delete it and get on with this process here. I just wanted to show you guys this is for real. You can get full read and write access to your root file system on an iPhone 4 running iOS 7. So I'm actually going to go ahead and restore this device back to stock iOS 7 and I'm gonna run through the setup process here real quick with you guys. I have it kind of sped up obviously so it doesn't take so long but we are going to be on a fresh stock install of iOS 7, no strings attached, nothing. There's the plain old basic iOS 7 with the app icons that everybody seems to hate. So let's go ahead and get this process started. As you can see, no funny tricks here. Again, everything's working perfect. You need an iPhone 4 running iOS 7 beta 1. Just to clarify that, that is what you are going to need to use this little hack here. So let's jump into the process. We're not going to waste any more time. Here we are on my iMac and I want to go over the list of requirements for you. You're going to need to download some applications on your computer. This will work on Mac or Windows though. So keep that in mind. There are different tools for both operating systems to make this happen. So the first thing you're going to need is CyberDuck or another SSH client, something of that nature, whatever your favorite SSH client is. Then you'll need Text Wrangler or another plist editor, something that you can edit a plist with. That's very important. And the next thing you're going to need here is Tiny Umbrella. That'll be to kick the device out of recovery mode later on in the process. And you can also download iFunbox or something similar in case you want to play around in the file directory on your iOS device. Now, the last thing you need here, the most important thing actually, is SSH RAM Disk Tool. And I'll be sure to link you to that. That is off of this website right here. You can download it. It's free and it's very important in this process. So this is going to enable AFC2 on your device, allowing you to have full read and write access on your iPhone 4 running iOS 7. And this tool right here will work on Mac or PC. So you can download that one tool. It's a little Java applet right here that you can run and it'll work just fine. So here we are in iPhone box. As I plug in the device, you'll notice here that we are in jailed mode. That means we do not have access to the complete raw file system. As you can see, there's really limited options here. We don't have anything. That is because we're in jailed mode. We are going to get rid of the jailed mode by doing this process here. So the first thing we're going to do is launch the SSH RAM disk tool right here. And let me pull that down for you guys. Now, as you can see here, we need to connect a device in DFU mode. 
So that is very important. We're going to have to put this iPhone 4 in DFU mode to be able to do anything first. So turn off the device, that's what you're gonna wanna do first, and then slide to power off. Now as soon as the screen goes black, you're going to want to press on the power button at the top. So as soon as you see that screen go black, be sure to press down the power button as you see me doing right here. As soon as you see the Apple logo though, Press the home button and hold down both of those buttons until the screen goes black again. Once it goes black, wait a second, and then you can release the power button as you see me doing and keep holding the home button. Now, shortly here, you'll see the RAM disk tool start to have some activity, as you can see there. That'll let you know that your device is in DFU mode and you can let go of the home button and you'll be good to go. So let this process run. It will take a little bit depending on the circumstances. I'm not really sure what they are, but it will take a little time, so just be patient. Let the tool do its thing, and eventually it'll finish up and we can continue on with this process. So as you can see, it says almost there. And then finally, we'll have this success message here, and you'll notice the iPhone looks like it's in some type of recovery mode, but you have success. Connect to localhost on port 2022 with your favorite SSH client using login root and password Alpine. And that's pretty standard for an iOS device, but let's go ahead and open up CyberDuck here, and then we can jump into getting into the file structures. Let's cancel all these messages out and tap on open connection. Now it may be different in your SSH client, but this is the basic gist of it. Make sure that you're using SSH file transfer and then we can go ahead and type in localhost, change the port to 2022, and then once you've done that, you can go ahead and go down to username, type in root, password, make sure you type in Alpine, and then click on connect. Now you may have to allow a key, it doesn't ask me because I did this once before, but if it does, just click allow or accept, now the next thing you want to do here is open up a terminal window. Now I have it in CyberDuck here on my toolbar. So you want to open up a terminal window with this SSH connection. Now this button may be in a different spot on your client. It's also in the Go menu for CyberDuck up here. I have it on my toolbar as well. So just open up a terminal connection with this SSH connection here and you'll be prompted to enter the root password again, which is Alpine once more. And once you see that prompt right there, it may look a little different on your SSH client. You are ready to go and you wanna type in mount.sh and then you'll see these two little lines pop up and that's how you know you are successful. So once you're done with that, you can close out of terminal or leave it open. We're gonna have to come back to it in a little bit here, but I chose to close it, not a big deal. We wanna go into the very bottom directory on the device and go into mount one or MNT one right there. And then we wanna go to ETC and we're gonna change a couple of files here now. So go into ETC and we wanna find fstab right there. We want to make sure that we make a copy of that on our desktop. So put it somewhere where you can find it. It doesn't have to be the desktop, but just make a copy of it on your computer. Then you're going to rename the one on the device to fstab.old. This will ensure that we have a working version of this file on our device in case anything goes wrong or anything like that. Now we want to open up this fstab file with text edit or WordPad or Notepad, depending on your operating system. And once you have that open here, we're gonna change something in the first line. There's two lines in here. So make sure that you pay attention to which line you are changing. As you can see here, I have the first line highlighted and you want to change the part where it says RO. So right here, we want to change RO to RW. So all you have to do is delete that O and change it to a W. It's very simple. Just change it to a W there. Then you can save this file and close out of it and be on your way. Now what you wanna do now is copy that file back to the device. So now we have fstab and then we have fstab.old. Your files should look exactly like this and make sure you set the permissions of the new file to read 644. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step in this process. We're gonna go back out to MNT1 right here. Let's back out and then we're gonna go into system right there, click on system and then go into library and then we're going to go down to lockdown. So down in the L's here, lockdown. Now we have services.plist at the bottom. Make sure you locate that file and we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna copy it to our computer here. We're going to copy it out. I'm going to put it on my desktop right here. And we want to 
make a backup of that file as well. So change it to services.plist.old. So now I'm going to jump into Text Wrangler. And like I said, you can use another plist editor. It's up to you, uh, depending on your operating system. But I have Text Wrangler here. So I'm going to open it up with Text Wrangler. And as you can see here, we have it open. We are going to put something right beneath the first key right here. So you can see I have this whole section highlighted. We're going to be adding something right below that section, the com.apple.afc section. So make sure you're adding it right below that portion. That's very important. I'll put this text down below for you guys so you guys can add this as well. But we're going to copy this text right here into the services.plist file right below com.apple.afc. So we're going to go ahead and paste this in. Just make sure, again, make sure you do it right below that one. It's very important. And then as you can see here, we have com.apple.afc2. And then we have it ending at the bottom there. So just make sure you add it below that. I can't stress it enough. I want to make sure you guys do this right. And once you've done that, then you're finished and you can save this file and then we can exit out of it. And again, we are going to copy that file to the device. So let's pull open this here and we're going to drag it into the bottom window here. Now you should have two files here, one with the .old extension and then you'll have the modified one and set the modified one's permissions to 644. And now we're going to launch terminal again with the SSH connection as you would in your SSH client. It may be different here, but after you've typed in your password, you want to make sure that you type in halt, H A L T. So type in halt and the second you hit the enter key on that, this device is going to go into recovery mode here. So as you can see here, when we hit enter, immediately it goes into recovery mode and you'll be stuck in this mode until you use tiny umbrella to get yourself out of it. So that's where tiny umbrella comes into play. Let's go ahead and minimize all of this stuff and we will go launch tiny umbrella here. So as you can see, we're still in recovery mode. Now let's hit OK on this stuff right here. And we are going to select the device and then click on Exit Recovery. Immediately the device will reboot back into its normal state as you can see it doing right there. We are rebooting back into iOS 7 and then we will have all of this root directory goodness. So I sped up the reboot a little bit for you and we're going to launch iFunbox here. Now as you can see I have iPhone 4 on iOS 7.0 and we do not have jailed next to it anymore. Now also, if you go into the raw file system down here, you'll notice that we have the full access to all of the root files on this device. You can drill in as far as you'd like. I can go all the way into you know, core services, down to the Springboard app and check out all of the files in there. Let's go ahead and pull up an example here. We can grab the newsstand icon, which is located in the Springboard app. So let's scroll down a little further. Here you go. We have the newsstand icon right here. As you can see, there are no tricks involved here. This is real. You can do this on your device. It's pretty cool though. And that's how I changed out all those icons that you saw in the beginning. I went in and changed out the icon files. And as you can see right there, I just copied a screenshot over to the root directory of the device. Even after a refresh, it's still there. We have full read and write access to this iPhone 4 running iOS 7. So it's pretty cool. I hope this was helpful for some of you out there. Maybe you'll be able to find out some cool tricks or something nice or fun to do with your iOS device. But keep in mind, you can do a lot of real damage to your device by messing around with the file system here and you'll have to restore and stuff like that. So don't just go messing around with everything. Use this wisely. I hope this is helpful for all of you that wanted to know how to do this. I hope that somebody can take this knowledge and make something cool happen. I don't know. But thanks again for watching, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave me a big old thumbs up if you did. And be sure to let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Thanks again for watching, everybody. This is Dom, and have a great day.